For those who are graduating from the hobby kit, which oftentimes you get like a kind of a small, fine hobby brush, or if you're a serious learner, you want to tap into the craft and use the traditional tools and materials that we use in Japan, then this would be the video for you. Let's start with the most traditional brushes that we use. The name of these brushes are a little bit tedious to learn for those who, who don't speak Japanese and even for those who speak Japanese who just started learning Kintsugi will have a hard time remembering or learning the names. But no need to take notes or memorize any of these, but it's just for your information if you're interested in understanding kind of the system that we have for, for these interesting brushes. And I think the interesting part of learning this traditional craft is to tap into the history and really understand each of the tool or the material, why we use it, what we use it for, uh, instead of just buying like a kit that comes with everything. So if you are serious about learning this craft and getting a little more deep into the materials and tools, you'll find this interesting, I hope. First of all, the name of these brushes often start with the color of the handle in Japanese. So you see here, with our master series, which it has labels on them at the end of the brush. So these are branded Makie brushes made by masters in Japan, handmade, or natural hair. And these brushes are a little bit difficult to acquire because the supply is very, very limited. It takes a long time and, you know, um, very skillful hands to make them and there are very few artisans who make these brushes and the two very well-known masters are Kuno and Murata. Um, one is in Nagano, one is in Kyoto. So they couldn't make them fast enough to meet the demand even for the domestic um, industry. So that's why these are very difficult to procure but if you have them you are very lucky and I have the other video teaching you guys how to take care of the brush so I hope you can take very good care of them because they are not cheap and they are very well made and very precious. So the system is the name of these brushes are named by the color of the handle. We have a red, a black and a yellow here and there are more colors but for the purpose of you know Kintsugi craft these are the three common colors. Of handle that we would use. The handle signifies the size of the brush. So here what you see is literally like small, medium, and large. For Master Murata, the signature style of his brushes is the cap as well. You know, it comes with a, a sleeve. Because typically you get a plastic cap, which is fine. But for Murata-san, he actually made the cap with bamboo which I find them very nice and interesting. I mean, definitely more fun and it's better than plastic as well. It's more sustainable than plastic. You just kind of slide it back and forth to use it as a cap. And to, let's say, after using and cleaning, unlike the typical cap, which you, you try to stick your brush from this end, what we have here is a sleeve, so you actually can slide it from the back side without having any chance of touching or damaging the very, very delicate brush tip. So that's one thing I like about it. For traditional Makia brush, really good ones. I mentioned it in the other video as well. The brush head is removable and it has three parts in here. It has the part that is the bundled up hair and then we have the middle tube that secures the head which you can pull the string to adjust how long you want your brush head to be and then we have the connector. The connector is this part which connects the brush head back to the handle. 
so three parts so in terms of taking care of it cleaning maintenance these three parts needs to be removed so that you can clean and maintain your brush nicely and then you put it back like this this is a unique characteristic of Makia brush if you actually have one you will notice how delicate they are and how well made they are that's why I like the traditional Makia brush very very much after the color of the handle the second part of the name of the brush actually shows you or tells you the type of hair and the brush profile which is like what shape the brush is traditionally we have these brushes that are called neji neji by seeing these two kanji characters we will know that this brush is made with mice hair or rat's hair which currently it's extremely extremely rare to have a neji brush because nobody actually used mice hair to make them anymore although I do have a Kinsuke sensei that told me he has his private special stash of neji brushes very pricey of course and he has a special connection with a very you know the rare master that still make these brushes with neji red hair eventually the makers evolve into using a different type of natural hair to make these brushes because red hair is becoming very difficult to acquire so the new name for the brushes is neji gawari gawari means change or substitution so when whenever we see the word gawari we know it's the second generation of makia brushes that is made with cat hair the most common type of makia brushes these days are neji kawari with the corona pandemic and the collapse of the supply chain even for neji kawari it is becoming very rare and very difficult to to source and there are other names as well shiratama so when we see shiratama we know that this brush is a cat hair brush as well it's just a different name and then there are other many other names like sekiban uh, when we see the word sekiban we will know that oh it's a calligraphy brush so these names kind of signifies the profile the type the hair of the brush so you will kind of know what to use it for so this one the yellow handle one so this is a larger brush obviously because we know from the color of the handle and this is called the sekiban uh, sekiban if you compare it with um, an, an energy brush so sekiban is definitely much shorter and is a little bit more rounded and it's bigger because it's a yellow handle so you can get a sekiban in a different color handle then it will be smaller and the reason why we have these two brushes is for different use if you have a longer more skinnier brush it will be good for like very fine hairline kind of a painting and if you need to do very long lines or long and curved lines very wide curve this will be the brush that gives you very very good control if you use a short brush for that you will notice that you'll be doing small strokes and many many strokes so it's it's a lot about you know the brushwork like what the brush is good for a certain type of brushwork and since this one is a calligraphy brush calligraphy uh if you think of you know like a japanese character or kanji chinese characters it has many short strokes and strikes and dots which calls for a shorter brush because if you have a long skinny brush you will never be able to create those shape uh, those kind of marks so in that kind of situation you will use um, a shorter brush which is more like a calligraphy brush this is not like the designated brush for certain anything it's just my personal preference and experience that i i love using sekiban to fill in bigger patches like this one here this is kind of small i mean this repair is not big you can still get away with using this but in terms of the efficiency for any larger surface area use a shorter brush like the sekiban you'll find it just faster instead of doing twenty thousand strokes to try to fill in that area and it'll give you much better control because the hair is shorter 
So for those who have experience in painting, you know, like watercolor or oil painting, acrylic, you probably already know this as the basic um, understanding of paintbrushes.